you're not blessed and highly favored, you're cursed and miserable. <laughs> oh, yes. We have the word for 2018 out if anybody wants it. It's also on Eternal Library. Um, you can download it from there. Praise God. God is very good to us all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to Isaiah 14, please? Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, is everybody there? In verse 12, please. We'll speak this. How you ha are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, where? In his heart. I will ascend into heaven. That means he was on the earth. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation in the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, and I will be like the most high. Snap. Of course, here's the Lord's response. You shall be brought down to hell, <laughs> to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a what? Wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house to his prisoners, all the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotting underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The broad of evil doers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they should rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. Now, I want you to understand something because this is powerful. People don't realize that the root of all causes is Satan's kingdom. It's Lucifer. People don't realize that. They lose sight of that. The root of all of our afflictions and everything that go on in our life is because of the powers of darkness that come after us. The root of the causes of the earth's problems right now. In other words, the root of your causes, the root of it, the original origination is through Satan's kingdom, Lucifer. Now, I'm telling you that this is the root of it. I'm not saying that we haven't opened doors to it. The root of all causes of the earth's problems, global problems, and this is before man was created. Is Lucifer's Satan's kingdom. That is the root of all causes of problems. And Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28 and verse 11. So the root of all the earth's problems is Satan's kingdom. And verse 12, I'm sorry. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyra and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection. Now you know he's, you're not, he's not talking about a physical king. There, there has not been a physical king who is made perfect except for Jesus. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. 
You were where? In Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. In other words, he's talking about Lucifer. He said, you are the anointed cherub who covers. Who covers what? The universe with praise. Because he was the praise and worship leader of the universe. Jesus, the Lord says, I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God, which was known as the earth then. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. In other words, Lucifer was here when God created the earth. He saw it all. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. And that's when he decided to exalt himself above God. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your mist. It will devour you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you, who have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Again, Lucifer with technology. It says he was wisdom. Beautiful. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was there when God created. So he knows all the arena in physics. He knows all that stuff. He knows all the scientific things. He knows how to establish. He knows how to take material things and create things to penetrate multiple realms. He knows how to do all kinds of things through technology. In fact, he's using technology now to take over the world. He's captivated individuals. He's taken, them, taken their minds. He's polluted them. Lucifer with technology and riches, using mankind to do his bidding, releasing riches to his servants that perform for him. <laughs> it's still going on today. Remember, the root cause of everything, sickness, disease, troubles, is backed by Satan's kingdom. And until that is finally understood, people are constantly going to the world for help instead of driving out the darkness. Amen. He is the root cause of all problems. Until that is understood, people will constantly be deceived. In Revelation 12. Is everybody there? Yeah. Verse 7. It says, And war broke out where? Yeah. In heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Now, I want to explain something very powerful, because remember, the word of God is three-dimensional. It's associated with past, present, and future also. There's a twofold meaning right here that is important to understand. It says, when war broke out in heaven, okay, this was the first battle. The battle that removed Satan, Lucifer, and his angels from the third heaven. They were removed from the third heaven. They were removed from the presence of God, from the glory of God's throne room. They were removed from this realm. Is everybody with me? It was the original battle of the war. That still continues now. But there will be another future battle that has not come yet, but it will come. And that battle will cast out Satan and his angels from the second heaven. And they will be manifested in the physical realm. And it's going to blow people away. That will be the second casting out. They will come in physical form. Is everybody with me? That will be the second part. Again, the first part of this war is when Satan and his angels was removed from the third heaven. And they dwell in the second heaven now. And they also associate with the earth. There is the first, the second, and the third heaven. But their dwelling place is in the second heaven. That's where their throne is at. And so in this, there will be a second battle during tribulation that God will remove them physically from the unseen realm and they'll take physical form. Why? Because he deceives the whole world. He's the root of all the causes of problems. Amen? You know, the word says something powerful. It says, he who sows to the flesh reap corruption, reaps corruption. He who sows to the spirit reaps life. But who influences you to sow to the flesh? Amen. And who influences you to sow to the spirit? The Lord, Holy Spirit. So you either have demons influencing you, powers of darkness, or the Holy Spirit. But the root cause of all problems is Satan's kingdom. In John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, verse 44. Uh, we'll start at 43. I guess we get started at 42. <laughs> so what is the root of all problems? Satan's kingdom. His influence. Again, you can blame other people. You can blame this. You can blame that. But everybody's problem is because of what they've listened to and obeyed through influence. What voice are you listening to? Who's the ruling voice in you? Verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Now that's powerful. Why? Because he's the deceiver. He's the father of lies. He is the source of all problems. He is the cause of all problems. He is the root of all problems on this earth. Does everybody get it? I hope so. 
The devil's a father of lies. Satan and his kingdom are the root causes of all earth problems. Hosea 4. Hosea 4, 6. We're familiar with that scripture, I think, by now. Amen. Amen. What does it say? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being a priest for me. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sin against me. I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity, and it shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat, but not be enough. They shall commit a harlotry, but not increase. Because they have ceased from what? Obeying the Lord. People are destroyed who have forgotten that God is the only protector, defender, and escape. He's the only way. He is the attacker for us to overcome the unseen world of Satan's influences. Without the knowledge of the eternal, of the eternal deception will continue to have victory in the physical, whether you believe it or not. Has everybody got it? I'm going to say that again. Without the knowledge of the eternal, the word, and correct interpretation of God's word without relationship in the spirit, without a desire of, of conviction and repentance and turning from evil, deception will continue to have victory in the physical realm. Whether other you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. So we need to have the knowledge of Christ. We need to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we need to have faith that supersedes everything. In 1 John chapter 3. Root causes. You know, we always try to figure out a problem. We have a tendency to try to figure out the problem but really not going to the root cause. If we would go to the root cause and shut that door, the problem sometimes begins to fix itself. That's why the Lord says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. We have a tendency to try to fix our own problems and we end up making it worse. Oh, hallelujah. That, that voice of the stranger influences us to fix our own problems. He begins to bring reasoning. He begins to bring false justifications. If you don't do this, then he brings fear. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. Oh, didn't you trust God? Heck no. Trust me. That's where we blunder it every time. What's the root of that? The voice of the stranger. Who told you that? That needs to be tattooed on all of our heads so when we look in the mirror. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I got caught up in my problem. I forgot where the source was. What's the root of it? What's the, you know? That's how the enemy operates. He gets you so caught up in everything else. that, And he just stands and then he shows up with an apron, a fork, and a knife. Like the coyote chasing the, uh, what is it, the road runner. And he says, all right, I'm going to throw some corruptible seed out here. And then I'm going to eat from your emotional release. Oh, hallelujah. First John chapter 3. In verse 1, let's speak it. 
Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us. Would you say that with me again? Therefore the world does what? Not know you. He doesn't know. They don't know us, man. They think we're weird, man. They think you're strange. You're peculiar. Or they think you're just plumb dumb. But we're smarter than they are. Because we have the mind of Christ. And they still have the mind of the devil. And remember, God created the devil. Hello. Praise God. <laughs> Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like him. Oh, snap. We shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him as he truly is. And everyone who has this hope in him, in who? In the Lord, purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he who, he, Jesus was manifested to what? Take away our sins, and in him there's no sin. Whoever abides in the Lord does not sin. That's very simple. If you're truly abiding in him, if your true relationship is with him, if he's always before you, if you are abiding in him, not abiding in you, you won't sin. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean you won't say something you regretted. Hello. It means that sin does not have dominion over you. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Ooh. Little children, let no one do what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose... The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, this is so powerful. In other words, sin is the presence of evil. Amen? That's what sin is. It is the presence of evil. The transgression is when you are influenced by the sin, by that presence, then you transgress. When you transgress because you've acted on what you've been told, what you've heard, what you've felt. Does everybody grab hold of this? Sin is the presence of evil. That's why sin is there, but you don't have to cooperate with it. Amen. So in this, sin, the presence of evil, will try to entice you, influence you, so that you agree with it and react on it. When you do, you commit a transgression. When a transgression is committed, it brings a curse on you and your family line until it is broke and removed. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So sin is the presence of evil. It is evil influence by deceptive spirits of Satan's kingdom. You know, and this is where the difference is between Children of God and children of the devil. Why? One is serving one and one is serving the other. One reacts, one responds. One submits, one rejects. Hallelujah. And it says that one practices righteousness and the other one doesn't. So we'll know them by the fruits of righteousness. You know, you get around a believer who's always downcast, always miserable, and is always fearful, well, obviously that person you can't trust. And if you can't trust them, God sure can't trust them. And the problem is, is because they don't trust God. People that don't trust God have the fruit of mistrust. Hello? Oh, praise God. Psalm 37.
He says he will never forsake you nor leave you. Hallelujah. Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Let me share with you that Satan's kingdom blesses Satan's people. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? So is he going to steal and kill and destroy his own people? No, not yet. The end result is he always does, but he'll use them up until they're dead. Amen. Just like all these movie stars and so forth that are proclaiming to be servants of Satan who sold their souls out for, for riches and fame. They have the riches and fame. That's it. But they're going to wake up in hell unless they turn. Amen. Amen. So he, the Lord is saying, don't be envious of them. They're going to perish. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good and dwell in the land and feed on his, what? Faithfulness. On whose faithfulness? His faithfulness. So your faith must be activated to be fed by his faithfulness. Lord, you're faithful. I trust you. You know, what you speak is what you eat. When you fall into places of afflictions or troubles or whatever. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. You got to speak your way out. You got to sow your way out of everything. Why? Because the atmosphere around you will start flooding with sin. You're responsible for the atmosphere to change it. Not God. God will come as you decree. He'll change the atmosphere around you. That's why, did you ever notice when you praise and worship and you get in, you change? You're like, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I needed this. You didn't, you know, and the devil fought you all away, told you you had all kinds of other things to go. You're too tired. You worked this. You did this. You did and, until you get in the presence of God. God, thank you, Lord. And then you realize how much the devil had spoken to you. Hallelujah. So he says, trust in the Lord, do good, dwell in the land, feed on his faithfulness, and do what? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why is he going to give you the desires of your heart? Because it's his desires. There's been an exchange made by praise and worship. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. What does it say? Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Don't fret. It only causes harm. Oh, hallelujah. It only causes what? Harm. Look at the wicked will prosper and cause envy to those that don't, <laughs> that don't have a connection to the Lord, that don't really trust him. See, what the enemy will start doing is getting your eyes on everyone else except for Jesus. Once he gets your eyes off of Jesus, the enemy starts coming. Because only Jesus, when your eyes are on Jesus, Jesus' is eyes on everything else. When your eyes are off of Jesus, then the enemy knows. Amen? That's why many people have sold their soul and their birthright for riches and fame for this temporary realm. In the temporary realm, Satan's kingdom creates false reality with self-fulfilled accomplishments. Even humanitarian rescues, he'll do it, to mislead individuals that are bad people, pretending to be good. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Or he'll mislead good people with bad people. Remember, he's always trying to mislead people. One of the things that the enemy always tries to do is get you to sow in the flesh. If he can get you to sow in the flesh, he knows you will reap corruption. He knows it. 
So he tries to mislead everyone in this temporary realm. So he creates a false reality with false self-fulfillments and accomplishments. Human humanitarian rescues to mislead individuals. And that you become a good person by following the ways of the world. Does everybody get this? Why? He causes an area where people begin to follow the ways of the world. This is incredible because there are, there are a lot of good people, but they're not saved. They're, they may be good, but they're not righteous. Does everybody get it? Oprah Winfrey is a good person, but she ain't righteous. She's got a good, she helps orphanages, she does. And there's many, many wealthy individuals that do all of these things. But they have no idea they're going to hell. And her works are not rescuing them. Amen? And that's where people are misleading people. Because of their wealth and their fame, they're, not, they're forgetting the root of all causes of problems in this world is because of Satan's kingdom. And the root of misleading people is the root of Satan's kingdom. He does not want people to be saved. He doesn't want them to be filled with the Spirit. And he certainly doesn't want them to attack his own kingdom. Amen? In 1 Timothy chapter 6. So what does he do? He misleads individuals. So they become followers of the way of the world that is, leads them to death, hell, and the grave. 1 Timothy chapter 6. In verse 6, let's speak it. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now, where does the love of money come from? Amen. Satan's kingdom. That's where the influence is. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, man or woman of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, and patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of what? Faith. faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Very powerful. Love of money is the root causes of many problems, including debt. Chasing money like a carrot <laughs> without relief in sight because of the lack of faith. Why do people chase money? Because of the lack of faith. They believe God can't provide for them. Hebrews 4. Verse 1. You know, I'll never forget when I, had, I was going to court and I was facing a mandatory prison sentence of a minimum of four years to do. And this is right after I got saved and the Lord said to me, Guy, I'll be your attorney. And I had a public pretender. <laughs> but God used this public pretender and the Lord just said to me, shut up when you go in there. Because I, I wanted to tell him I was a new creation. It wasn't me. <laughs> Lord said, be quiet. <laughs> They'll lock you up. <laughs> and I left that room on a mandatory prison term. I had to do a mandatory four years minimum. I left there with probation. Because I let the Lord be my attorney. Amen? 
The word says if you're a new creation in Christ, old things have passed away, all things have become new. Well, it wasn't me. They might have had my fingerprints, had me on camera, film, became a movie star. It was a star of darkness. But I wanted to tell them it wasn't me because it wasn't me. I truly believed it wasn't me anymore that did it. I was influenced. It wasn't me. Even though it was this body. But he wouldn't let me say that because I would have probably still been in prison today. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, profit them not being what? Mixed with what? Faith in those who heard it. Being mixed with faith, what do you mean? They didn't take it serious. They didn't take it deep and digest it. They didn't let it part, come in and plant seed. And, and, and it's like if, if you're going to put a seed and you were going to plant something, what do you usually do? You usually dig a little hole to put the seed in the soil. But see, they didn't let the seed penetrate. It stayed on the top and it was eventually taken. See, when it's mixed with faith, it's mixed in the soil. Amen? And so it didn't, it, it, it didn't do anything. It not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. And he said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now this is powerful. Because... So many people really don't take it serious. They don't let it, it, they don't mix it with the soil. You're mixing it with faith. So what? It says that, you know, that God will water it and it will grow. And, and it, the Holy Spirit loves to plant that seed in me and you. So faith, with the word, begins to man. He says, feed on my faithfulness. It is bringing your connection. Faith is the connection with the king of glory. And 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 in verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. There we go. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. And by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. For, and his commandments are what? Not burdensome. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world is what? Our what? Our faith overcomes the world. Hmm. Faith is a connection with the Spirit, the Word, and the Father. Overcomes the voices of the stranger and temptations of eye candy. <laughs> of the things of the world. People get in debt because of materialism. Oh, I need this. I want, I want this. I want this. I want this. Well, I don't care how much it costs. I could just, you know, charge it. Charge it. You got to pay for it. It brings debt. The enemy loves people to get in debt. He loves it. That is one of his things, to get people in debt. Then people work, bust their butt, and try and get out of debt. And they spend all their time trying to get out of debt, and they can't serve God then. Do you understand how he operates? Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 4. And they, people fear, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to pay that? But in the meantime, they enjoyed that brand new car that cost 600 and something bucks a month. 
which is plum ridiculous. Half of a mortgage payment. For some people, a mortgage payment. Ephesians 4. And they call it a blessing from God. Yeah, the Lord blessed me with a brand new car. Praise God. See, when somebody says to me they got blessed with a brand new car, it means they got it for free. <laughs> yeah, I got blessed with a brand new car. Oh, hallelujah. We got blessed with a car. I would have never expected that. This attorney shows up in our cul-de-sac with a Lexus. He says, look, I want to bless you with this. I say, what? You'd be at the wrong house. No, you at the right house. <laughs> it's just that he put money in it, this, that, and whatever, and it needed a couple little things and whatever, so praise God. I wasn't going to refuse the blessing. But I, I, again, being positioned is essential. When you're in position, all things are coming to you. Everything's coming. You just got to stand strong. Have your faith connected, knowing that all things are going to work to the good, no matter what's going on. You're not going to be moved. Okay, praise God. I got this, 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 and this. Lord, it's yours. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I don't know how you're going to fix this, but I know you're going to fix this. And I'm going to tell you, once that begins to happen, the enemy comes with every solution to fix it. He'll keep you up at night. Tell you to write it down. And you'll say, Lord, is this you? And he's yelling from the background. No, but the voice of the enemy is so much louder. It's not me. You just gave it to me. Since when are you going to take it back? How many times people give their will? Lord, I give you my will for five minutes. Then they take it back. What is the root of all of the causes of problem? Satan. Satan's kingdom. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 4.25. Therefore do what? Putting away lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give, oh, wait a minute, nor give, nor give, nor give. This is not a name of a person, nor give. He says, do not give place to the devil. Well, if you keep losing sight that the root of all problems is Satan's kingdom, the voice of the stranger, the presence of evil. You can make place for the enemy. Remember, he's always knocking on your door. You can't escape. You have to take dominion. You can't lock yourself in the bathroom. He'll follow you in. Verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give to him who is in need. And let no corruptible see or word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Edification. Now, oh man, you ain't never going to make it. I can't believe this happened to you. Oh, shut up. Bring encouragement. All things are going to work to the good. I know you blew it, but it can work to the good. Amen? I know you're an idiot, but it can, you can get smarter now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. All things can do what? Work to the good. Now, wait a minute. Are you ready for it? Verse 30. Hold on. And do not what? Grieve, Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you 
with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. In other words, bitterness. What's the source? What's the root cause of bitterness? The enemy. How about offense? Satan's kingdom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't give place to the devil. Submit to God, and you'll be able to resist the devil. Psalm 119. Root causes. Verse 65, Psalm 119, verse 65. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? Went astray. Before, or went astray from what? Following the Lord. Amen? Because the enemy always tries to draw people in another direction, then he, then affliction comes. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. I was dumb, but I got smart on that one. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Did you hear what he said? He said, look it, I'm being accused of all kinds of stuff, but I don't care. I, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep your precepts with my whole heart. I'm going to keep your promises, what you said. I'm going to take what you said over everything else, what everybody else said. It says, their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Not why, it's turning to the good. He said, man, I was afflicted, but I learned from that one. I ain't doing that one again. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Wow. Afflicted, he went astray. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I, the affliction is the problem. Amen. The, going astray is the root. Because the root of it was caused by the enemy. Go to Proverbs 12 for a minute. In verse 1, let's speak it. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. That's what the word says. You don't like to be corrected? Use an idiot. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Look at nobody likes to be corrected because everybody thinks that they're right. Amen? Amen? But if you're humble enough, you accept correction. You know what? We should look for correction. We should look for conviction. We should look for it. Lord, correct me. Slap me in the head. Kick me in the butt. Do whatever you got to do. Let me tie my sneakers together or something. But show me. I, I don't want to do anything to offend you. I want to do what's right. And I don't want to miss what you're trying to tell me. Again, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord. But a man of wicked intentions will, he will be what? Condemned. Praise God. First John chapter 2. The root cause of all problems is Satan's kingdom. We're going to get that tattooed in your spirit tonight. <laughs> First John chapter 2, is everybody there? 
In verse 15. Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Is out of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The love of the world is not the will of God. This is where people fall into deception because they begin to love the world in all areas. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. They love everything else. They love their job more than they do God. They love the money more than they do God. They love their spouses more than they do God. They love their children more than they do God. That's all idols. He's got to be number one. They love themselves before they do love God. Matthew 10. And what is the root cause of that? Satan's kingdom, the voice of the stranger. Matthew 10, verse 34. Who do you think creates wars? Think about that. Where do wars come from? People want to maintain their territories or take somebody else's. Oh, hallelujah. In the Old Testament, God was driving out demonic forces, Satan's kingdom. That's why he was taking territories. He was driving out Satan's kingdom. We still should be driving out Satan's kingdom. That's what Trump's trying to do right now. That's his mission. Matthew 10, verse 34. Do not think I've come to what? Bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Hallelujah. Think about that. I didn't come to bring peace. He did not. He's going to bring peace. But he didn't come to bring it the first time. Your peace and my peace is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. He left his peace for you and me, but he didn't bring peace to the whole world, only to his children. So he says, for I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. And this is again that area where people, their families and everything is an idol. They put them first before kingdom. And what is the root cause of that? Voice of the stranger, isn't it? See, because the enemy loves to deal with, play with people's emotions. And then people make decisions out of emotion instead of out of truth. Now I'm going to close at Ephesians 3. Ephesians chapter 3. You know, if you're not a threat to Satan's kingdom, you're a threat to God's kingdom. Think about that. So we got to examine ourselves. Am I really a threat to Satan's kingdom? In verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit through his spirit in your inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through 
faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could what? Ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever and ever. Again, if you're not a threat to Satan's kingdom, you're a threat to God's kingdom. Amen? Understanding that the root cause of all problems is the voice of the stranger, Satan's kingdom, the presence of evil. Don't let it mislead you. And don't take no garbage. Quit being swayed by the emotional arena of the soulish realm. Take dominion. Amen? Be careful who you associate with. If a person doesn't want to be free, then he can take the demons with them. Let them run the course. Don't provide for them. It's ridiculous. You know, you can't help someone that don't want help. Amen? You don't want help? See ya. Go eat some dirt. Maybe you'll cry out to the Lord and you'll get a visitation. Until that reality comes that the root of the cause of their problem is not you, family, or inherited. It's Satan's kingdom. Amen? If they're not willing to accept that, let them go. But be careful who you associate with, people, places, and things. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that this seed be imparted and protected by the blood of Jesus so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory and that your character and image and likeness will be expressed through each and every one of us with truth, boldness, love, and integrity in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen.